Hello and thanks for joining School of the American Rifle. This video is a bench layout video for upcoming students. If you're slated to take a School of the American Rifle class, we urge you to watch this video so you can understand what's at your bench, what it's for. Um, that being said, if you're not taking a class, this is going to be a somewhat long video. So unless you're interested in seeing what we have at benches, it's probably not something that you would be interested in. Like I said, this is for upcoming students so they have a layout and understanding of what's going on in their workspace. So we'll start at the bottom and then work our way up to the top. So underneath every bench we have a little trash can for all your non-important things that you don't want to keep. And then we have a pull-out cart. This pull-out cart has three levels to it. The very bottom level is for students to put pretty much any of their extra stuff they don't want on their workbench down there. There's a pair of hearing protection down there. Every student uh, is provided hearing protection when we do live fire testing at the end of our class. We have multiple torque wrenches here on the second level. We have a click wrench, we have a digital wrench, we have a beam wrench, and we have a breaker bar. If you notice on these, they say don't loosen with wrench. You can mess up the calibration on these, and I do get them checked for calibration. We have a laser thermometer that's used for checking the temperature of things that you're going to heat up. What will we heat up? Well, on the side of the bench here, we have a map gas torch. And that's for heating the upper receiver up. If you're going to put a barrel extension in, if you have thread locker, you have to defeat. So you use this, you use an electronic thermometer, and it'll tell you what your workpiece temperature is. So it can help you break things free. On the front of the cart, we have paper towels, you know, cleaning up dirty bits, things like that. But, um... The top part of the cart is where the most common parts are. So we have a dead blow hammer for striking things that you don't want to damage. We have a regular 8 ounce ball peen hammer. Pretty standard hammer for gunsmiths and armors. And we have a 2 pounder. This is for knocking out taper pins on barrels or trying to smack something you need to get moving. In the very back, we have a Geisley reaction block with some change. I have a video showing how we use that. And then we have an NC Star receiver extension jig. These, the purpose of these both are to align your buffer tube or receiver extension with your lower so they don't clock. We have two armors wrenches, a Midwest and a Sensei firearms one. The Sensei firearms one has like these multiple hammer tips. Um, the Midwest is the one that most of my students prefer. I like this because the keyway for the torque wrench is close to all the work piece areas so it doesn't change your torque value. We have a Midwest URR we have these two steel rods that we use for aligning muzzle devices. Feeler gauges that we use for various things. Forward control muzzle device wrench. Forward controls castle nut wrench. Wood block for padding items that you want to strike with a hammer so you don't mar them up. We have a no more Picatinny rail grabber. This is to align your rail with your upper as you're tightening screws. Doesn't scratch things up. A bolt vise to compress your ejector for installation and removal, a hammer dry fire block, a little Crow Gunworks trigger guard installation and removal press. I like these instead of using a hammer and punch it's safer so you don't break the lower. We have a lock and hold pivot lock AR-15 magazine block. These are the best magazine blocks on the market in my experience. And then we have two jigs here. One is a 3D printed jig from on missiongear.com they were donated and then we have this fixture here from Midwest these were donated as well this is their mag block lower receiver jig and it also does uh, a little tray for parts and I like it for the gas block area it's nice and wide so it's very universal for a lot of different gas blocks where these types of jigs only work with the typical low profile so all right, did we miss anything here? That looks about everything. Oh, we have these uh, Torx and Allen bits. I'm not really fond of these. I have them here, but we have all the different bit drivers up on the top of the bench. I'll show you those in a minute. But that's what's on the cart. You can roll this around, move it around your workspace. Every bench has a two inch wood top. There's a piece of granite in between every bench. This is used to work as a surface plate. So if you wanna see if your rail system is straight has any bends in it you want to see if your rail and your upper receiver align after being torqued and tightened lay it on there it'll tell you if things are flat it's not a certified plate but I've had it checked 
All right, and then we have laptops. The laptops are mainly used for borescopes. So we have these little cheat sheets here. These cheat sheets here show the colors of the punches here in the organizer. So yellow punch for roll pins for the trigger guard, blue punch, bolt catch. So very intuitive, so you don't have to hunt around for punches. The other side is for reviews, which I don't ask anyone to do. And then on the other side of our bench, we have all these different chemicals. And what I do is I list the name of the chemical, its properties, and the description of the container it's in. So if you want to know what the best thread locker is for a particular area, it'll tell you if it's low or high strength, its temperature rating, things like that. And this is where we keep them organized. And then the last thing we have is our feed ramp work chart. This is when we're doing feed ramp work on the class. This is the order we go in, diamond burr, stones, not always needed. Uh, Cratex bits and then a polishing felt bob with polish and then on the back side we have where we get some of those items from Brownells, Amazon and such. To use the borescope we're going to come over to the right side of the bench. You'll open the borescope up, you'll pull it out, plug it in via USB, the end here lights up. It has a light switch right here so it dims or brightens the light. And this is how you change the focus on it by turning the head. We are going to upgrade to another newer model of the test long bore scopes. That's what this is that won't require the laptop. But for now, this is what we have at the benches. And then this is the extreme effects gas system illuminator. This goes into the gas tube. So if you have trouble seeing in up into the gas system, this will line it up. My friend Philip makes these. So we use these at every bench. All right, on the top of the bench here, we have some waterless hand cleaner. Get some grease and stuff on your hands. This is uh, everyone's individual uh, bathroom hand towel. So we have towels in the bathroom, but some people don't want to use something maybe someone else has touched. So everybody has their own towel at the bench. We have safety glasses. We urge everyone to wear these parts bin if you want to throw little things in there. And there's just a general purpose rag to wipe off dirty bits. It's some Spec 76 oil, some Sotaracha. If you don't know what that is, check our videos out. All of our different chemicals we use. We have a thumbtack here. So if any of the tips get clogged up, you take the thumbtack out, poke the tip out. We have Aerosol 64, which is the grease that you should be using for your barrel nut and castle nut. You open these up and they have a brush applicator so you don't got to get all cruddied up with the oil and then we also have just synthetic grease in the back one here. Use it for various assembly. We have water. Water is used whenever you use cold blue or aluminum black. You want to basically wash off the salts or acids that they're using so that way it doesn't continue to react on the product you're trying to darken up. This is our polish. We use this. I'll show that in a minute. Um, and then little bits inside here. We give every student replacement roll pins. Cleaning patches to clean the barrel out and some stainless steel shims which we use to gauge various areas of the gun. Something that's affordable. Never, not everything has to be expensive. So that's back here. This is our polish. The polish is used with our felt bob. That's why I showed you on the flow chart. This is the only one you use the polish with. And these are the various bits right here that we had on that flow chart. Of course, we have a waiver at every bench, our gauge specs, emergency medical contact form. We're gonna go over all the doodads that are here. So, let's start from the back and work our way to the front. We have scissors and a box cutter. Cut, cut open your packaging, whatever, if you've got an unassembled gun. We have some Diamond files. These are from Harbor Freight. Some of this stuff's from Harbor Freight. You can get a good deal on certain things. These are actually really good files for what you get out of them. We have some magic marker. This is for feed ramp work. And some tape to tape off areas. We normally don't use this, but it's here. Same thing with these chemicals that we have off to the right. There's chemicals there that I don't recommend using, but when you take my class, I don't have the my way or the highway mentality. If you don't like the thing that I suggest or recommend, 
you can use something else. Before we go back to the organizer, I wanted to show these chemical dispensers. You flip the top on them. If you want to get acetone out and you give it a couple pumps and the acetone will pump up there. There we go. So you don't have to dump it out on anything. You take your cotton swab, you take your brush, you get some on there and you have your degreaser. So the rest of the organizer, we have a magnetic light. Stick that anywhere on your bench. We have two magnifying glasses. We have a square one and a round one, so you want to take a close look at components. We have a Mark Brown gas tube wrench, really good for removing stuck gas tubes. And then we have a Wheeler fat wrench. I do recommend that if you own an inch pound wrench that you use for armorer's work, bring it to the class with you. Make sure this labeled that it's yours so it doesn't get mixed up but we can check calibration on your wrench if you come to the class with it. So this one lists negative four because I found when I checked this with my calibration tool that it's always four inch pounds under what it's listed. That way you can take that into account when you're trying to trust a tool to tighten something to value. So bring your fix-it sticks, vortex wrench, wheeler wrench. Uh, if it's an inch pound wrench, bring it and we can check it out. We have a Mark Brown Customs gas tube gauge. We have our weed trimmer line, which is used to gauge the gas tube internals. We have a magnet, which I teach to use for the front pivot pin. We have another piece of weed eater line to check the carrier key. You've seen that in videos before. We have some side cutters, needle nose pliers, spent brass casing. This is used when you're doing feed ramp work. This is our chuck for our rotary tool or Dremel tool. I'll show that in a second. Various Dremel bits that we normally don't use, but they're there for an emergency purpose. We have all these various bits here. We have um, Weha Torx bits. We have some metric bits. We have some fractional bits up here. And then some miscellaneous bits from our uh, kit here, right here, that um, Multitasker donated to the School of the American Rifle. We have a video that we're going to put up about this. These are great little tools. So they donated these, put the SOTOR logo on it, so my students would have a nice handy little tool at their bench. If you don't want to use that, we do have a standard bit driver for them. We have many, many flashlights. We have a little pen light here, looking inside your bolt carrier, your barrel. And then this one is a Harbor Freight light. It's a one inch light, but these things, they fit inside of an upper receiver perfectly. So if you want to light the feed ramps up to do an examination, they're perfect for that purpose. We have a magazine catch installation and removal tool right here. These aren't made anymore. But uh, we have them here at the bench, prevents you from scratching up stuff. One of my friends is making a copy of those. We have various staking punches here. One, two, three, four. I show how to use different staking methods for castle nut staking. These white punches are used for the taper pins if you have a front sight base. This tool here is to install your C-clip for your port door or dust cover. Put the C-clip in there and then you click the rod in place. Pretty neat little tool. And then we have our obsidian arms punches right here. These are, like I said, color-coded so you know which punches to grab. We have a holder, a roll pin punch, and a drive punch for each area of the gun. Um, I have videos showing this, but essentially you start with the holder, you seat it with the drive punch, and then you set it into the hole with the roll pin punch. Never try to drive it with a roll pin punch. It'll mushroom out. The only thing that I use roll pin punches for is to set a pin or to remove it. So be careful about how you use your punches. You'll wreck them in very short order if you use them the wrong way. This is a uh, rear pivot installation tool. I have a video showing how to use this. If you have uh, rear pins you need to swap out and you don't want to take the buffer tube off, you can use this. Uh, just a Phillips bit here because we don't have any in the organizer and it doesn't fit yet because I haven't made room. We have a pivot pin installation tool. Sort of the poor man's method. Clevis pin and a brass punch. We have our non-magnetic washer that I'm sure you've seen in many videos. This is our gas port dimpling alignment tool. Pretty standard little thing. And then this is our bolt catch slave pin. When you're putting your bolt catch in, you put that in there and it holds everything together while you knock the roll pin in. A dual-ended GI nylon brush, a chopstick, great for pushing. Uh, scraping on things without causing damage. We have some pipe cleaners. I don't normally recommend these, but if you've got to clean the inside of your bolt where your firing pin rides, this is a great little cleaning implement. We have some cotton swabs, a couple ball end 
Allen bits. These are really useful if you have like the set screw in the back of your lower, or if you have like thread in bolt catches, things like that. So if you have that at your bench, check them with those tools. We have a threaded tool so you can thread the rear of the receiver for a captured takedown spring. Magic marker, pencil, pen, pick tool. We use this for checking various items on the gun. Our tactical firing pin retaining pin removal tool. These punches right here, um, this is a slave pin for the disconnect, brass punch for hammer and trigger pins. This is part of the obsidian kit, again, for hammer and trigger pins, and then the Geisley hammer and trigger pin tool. I like to show different methods to use all those. To the right is our feed ramp items. And then we have some regular Dremel bits back here, a cutoff wheel and a sanding drum. We don't use that that often. And then some miscellaneous bits for the bit driver. So let me look over this, see if I'm missing something. Oh, we have a tape measure. This is for measuring your action or buffer spring or any other thing on the gun you want to measure. We have chamber flags. We mandate that all students use a chamber flag if the gun's assembled and in firing uh, condition. Uh, and let's see what else. I think that's about it for all that. Did I miss anything? I'm turning to my wife to help me. Like I said, long video. This is more for people to familiarize yourself with the bench. Uh, let's move off to the right. As you can see, they have pads on the benches. This helps keep things from rolling off the bench. These are just like gym mats that you can get at the hardware store. Um, it was recommended if you're going to be beating on items that you put it onto the wood surface. So let's say you want to use your bolt vise to take your roll pin out on your ejector. Don't put it here and bang on it. Put it there and bang on it. It's not solid on this. So just a little tip. Everyone has a vise with vise pads. These have leather on them. We make these for the vise. And then we have this little sewing machine light. This is my wife's idea. You can take these, they're magnetic, and move them around the vise to get yourself some good lighting. We have our vise anvil, and then we have this little bourbon bag. If you want to bead on something, instead of scratching up the item or using a bunch of tape, you just lay this over your vise, and then you have a padded surface. I didn't drink all that whiskey that was given to me. We have a Dremel tool at every bench. Flex shaft rotary tool, that's what the chuck tightens. I like these better than regular Dremel tools because they use a collet. This has a chuck so it, you don't have to change anything. They use different size mandrel shafts. These are foot activated. So if we go to the bottom of the bench, that's how you activate it. Okay, we did all this. What else am I missing? Oh, our chairs. So here's our chairs. These are recent upgrades. In the past, we used stools. And people said that, that uh, one of the downsides of the class is when you were done, after a lot of education, your backside hurt. So you can take these, bring the armrests down, move them up if you don't like them. But nice and comfy. We've used them in one class so far. And uh, they seem to be received quite well. If you don't like this as an option, we also have stools that are adjustable height. And then we also have folding chairs that they can bring out. The downside about the folding chairs is they sit lower than these workbenches do. So as far as what you should bring to the class, I'm going to put this in the description, but everyone is required to bring an AR-15. It can be in pieces or parts, or it can be assembled and we'll tear it down and rebuild it. You have to bring test ammo for the caliber of the firearm you're bringing. So if you're building a 223 or 556, bring at least 20 rounds of 223 or 556. If you're bringing a suppressor, and you can bring a suppressor to Maryland, I recommend you double your ammunition that you bring because we're going to test it with and without the suppressor. Bring a notepad so you can make notes. And like I said, bring a, 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 an inch pound wrench if you own one. We can check it for calibration. The optional things that you can bring, and this is where it can make or break your experience. I recommend that if you have trouble with the lighting we have here, and if we go up top, you can see we have LED lights in the shop. Above you, like I said, the sewing machine light, various little lights. If you need more light, get a head, headlamp light. Bring it with you, and you can use that when you're up and close on something. We do provide lunch for classes. Most of the time it's pizza, but sometimes we deviate and we'll get things like subs, other things, depending on the weather. Maybe we can't get delivery. So if you can't wait until lunch, always get your breakfast before you come in. But if you can't wait until lunch or you get hungry after lunch, before dinner time rolls around and we break class, 
bring snacks, bring drinks. You can keep it at your workspace. You can snack or drink as much as you like. We just ask that it not be alcoholic. If you have prescription glasses, bring those. We do have safety glasses, but make sure you don't forget your prescription glasses. If you have medications, don't forget those. If you have a phone that you're going to be using to take pictures or video or take notes with, make sure that you bring your charger under the bench. You can't see it, but there's a power strip. You can charge your phone or whatever at your bench. We have a Keurig at the um, at our drink station area. So if you want to bring your own coffee pods, go ahead and pop them in there. We do provide coffee pods, but some people are very particular about the coffee they drink. So bring your coffee pods. If you have something particular you want, I brew a pot of coffee and then I have just some K-cups that are of good quality, but maybe they're not fancy like you like. Uh, if you have your own tools that you want to bring, you can. But I do ask that you mark them in some way so you can distinguish them from what we have. You really don't need it. We supply all the tools that you will need. Um, and we try to give you a good experience of what you might want to buy after the class. If you want to bring something, you can, but it's just a lot more to keep track of. So that's up to you. We do provide ear protection. Um, but if you want to bring your own, everything we have at the bench has been sanitized. The glasses, ear pro, everything. But if you have your own ear pro, you prefer to bring, bring those. And uh, I think that's about it. Some students uh, tend to be quite organized at their bench. Some are very messy. And we have to clean up a lot after them, but that's part of the class. i got to do some cleanup. If you are using these lights, just make sure you turn them off so when you do go back to them the later that day or the next day, your stuff is still charged up. We do have batteries we can replace stuff, but just a little bump in the road of your class. So. Just turn your ear pro off, your flashlights off, anything that is using power, and you'll have a better class experience. So, I'm sure that's a lot. Maybe some of you were bored to death by seeing that. But uh, I wanted to give a layout, if you will. And as always, I hope you found this video educational. And thanks for watching.